I'm currently working on a small project where I need a thread in my 3D printed part, because it needs to be threaded onto a faucet outside. I've been modeling and 3D printing threaded parts for quite a while, why I thought I'll show you how that's easily done in Fusion 360 and share some best practice with you. Guten Tag everybody, my name is Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. So there are a couple of ways how to model threads in Fusion 360, from very simple ones to more complex ones. Depending on the application, you need to choose the method which is most suitable for you. Fusion 360 has quite a nice thread tool since some time, which includes thread models for probably 90% of your applications. My faucet for example has a Qi 3 quarter pipe thread, which is also included in the library and the part fit perfectly on its first print. So let's take a look how the tool is used. Okay, so let's start with the first method, which is also the most simple one. In this method we are gonna use the integrated thread tool in Fusion 360 to create our thread. In order to do that we will at first create um, a cylinder and on the outer diameter of the cylinder we will create a thread. So I will create a new sketch in here, circle, um, I wanna model an M10, so a metric 10 millimeter thread with a pitch of 1.5 millimeters. So um, I create a circle with 10 millimeters in diameter, but the diameter actually is not that important because it will later be adjusted uh, when you create the thread. Okay, so then we are extruding the circle to get a cylinder. And now we can go under create thread and just select the outer diameter of the cylinder. Um, Fusion 360 will already um, prompt us with um, a thread which um, Fusion thinks is the most suitable one. So since we have chosen um, a cylinder with 10 millimeters in diameter, um, it already selected a metric profile 10 millimeter in diameter. And um, right here, the pitch, uh, so the most coarse one, 1.5 millimeters. But if you wanna go finer, there's also the possibility to select all the other ones, which are in the ISO standard. <coughs> um, the class right here is the tolerance class. So 6G is um, the not so tight one. Uh, if you want to have it a little bit more tight, you can select the 4G, 6G direction right hand and now there's um, actually some something quite important so if you want to later 3d print this thread um, it's not possible if you just do it this way because if you say okay the thread you will see the thread right here but that's just a visual representation so in the STL file only a cylinder would be exported and that's not what we want to have. So it's very important that you select right here uh, this option which is modeled. Um, if you select that the thread will really be modeled as a three-dimensional part and if you export it now as an STL the STL will also include the geometry of the thread as you can see right here. Um, so it's actually really simple. The same procedure can also be used if you want to model um, a nut, so an internal thread. So I will just hide this body right here. I will create a new circle which has an inner diameter of like something around eight millimeters. I create a second circle which is like 13 millimeters in diameter. We extrude this annular profile to something like yeah, three millimeters and it's just as simple as that. So select thread again, select the internal diameter select the right size of your thread, 10 millimeters, 
1.5 millimeters pitch. Select modeled and hit OK. So this is already our internal thread, so are we not? Um, if we do a section analysis, um, we can take a look at how good they match up. So let's do it this way and take a look at it. All right, so you can already see that there is already some kind of a tolerance included in your model and that's good because um, a thread just works if there is a tolerance between the two parts. In some cases, the tolerance which is included in the model might not be sufficient for the specific kind of printer you're using or the material you're using. Um, and there is kind of a simple way to um, just make the tolerance a little bit bigger and that's it's working like that. Um, so you select the modify tool, select this part right here and just extrude it a little bit on the inside. So just by like 0.2 millimeters, this will increase the clearance in here and additionally select one flank of your thread and do more or less the same thing. So just also by a tiny amount, 0.1 millimeters, 0.2 millimeters, you just sometimes need to, to try it out which works best for you and for your application. Um, but that's how you increase the play between your uh, inner thread and your outer thread and this is how you can adjust the play between the parts and make sure that they are later movable when you print them out. Okay, so the second method uses the coil tool and with the coil tool you can for example do some some round threads which which might be useful for, um, for example, a, a ball thread or something like that. Okay, so we start again with a cylinder. So I create a circle. Uh, let's use 20 millimeters as a diameter. I extrude the cylinder and then we go into the coil tool. So for the coil tool, you at first need to uh, define a diameter and that's the diameter of the coil itself. So not the wire, but uh, the diameter um, of the coil of, well, the diameter of the, of the windings. So I select this plane again I create a circle which in my example has the same diameter as our cylinder, so 20 millimeters. Okay, and then you have different options. So for the type I want to say height and pitch because usually you know the pitch and you know how high your thread uh, should be. So you can just drag this a little bit right here, um, change the section diameter, I changed this to four millimeters. I, for example, wanna have a pitch of six millimeters. And then you just hit okay. And there you have your ball threads. So to make it um, even nicer, what you can do is, for example, add an additional fillet right here and right here, so just like, well, 1.5 millimeters, let's see. And hit OK and you have a really nice thread which is going all around of your part. Cool. Okay, so the last method I'm going to show you is also the most advanced one. Um, this method will enable you to create any thread shape you, you wanna have. Um, and for this, we're gonna use different tools and at last the sweep command. 
So for this, I am going to create a cylinder again. So circle, 12 millimeters in diameter. Hit OK, stop the sketch, extrude the sketch to have a cylinder. Let's make it 20 millimeters high. Okay, so what we want to have now is we want to revolve a sketch we create around our cylinder, but not just on one plane, but we want to have it in something like a helical shape. Um, so I haven't found so far an easy method to create this helix. So we want to we so we will use a, a separate tool to create the helix, and then we create the sketch to finish our profile. So what we're going to use is the coil tool again. So I select it. I select this surface right here. Select the origin of our coordinate system, make it 12 millimeters in diameter. So this time we won't use a circular pattern, we will use a triangular one. So for this one, we gonna use a triangular external section and we will set the section position to inside. Yeah, there we go. Um, we will just make this a little bit smaller and then we will adjust the the parameters of, of our thread. So one parameter is the height, so we want it to go all the way up and we want to have a pitch of, let's say, three millimeters. So what we want to do later is we want to extract this helical line right here, which is going all the way around. So in order to do that, I will change the operation to a new body. This will enable us later to use this new body to create exactly this helical shape. Just hit OK. And let's hide our cylinder. So in order to extract the helical line, we will use a projection method. So you're gonna go under sketch, project, Include 3D geometry. Um, select any plane you like. And we will select this line right here. And you can already see in, in this purple color that we will get this helical line. Additionally, additionally we also need um, a second line uh, because otherwise the, the command will not work out properly. So I also gonna select this line right here. Just say stop sketch, we, we can hide the body and we can see that we have this really nice uh, line going upwards. Okay, so let's, show, so let's show our first body again. The next thing we need to do is create the shape of our thread we wanna have. In order to do that, we will create a new sketch on this surface right here. And now it's important to use the plane which is going through these two points right here. Um, okay. And now we can just sketch the profile we want to have and this can be as fancy as we like. So... And now it's quite important to set the outer line to a diameter which is just slightly smaller than the outer diameter of your cylinder. So I will choose 12.1. I will also dimension the angle right here and let's make this so let's make it 45. Okay, so what's still left? Okay. And make the width right here 1.2. Let's make it one millimeter. Okay, so now we stop the, stop the sketch and now we will use the sketch, revolve it around this line right here to cut out our thread. So go under create, sweep, 
select for the type path and guide rail. The profile is this sketch right here. The path is the outer helix and the guide rail is our inner helix. There we go. So for profile scaling, I usually set this to, to none because otherwise um, it sometimes screws up the dimensions of the thread. Um, we will use the cut operation, hit OK. And there we go. We have our custom thread on the cylinder right here. Perfect. To make it a little bit nicer, we can also add a chamfer down here. It's like four millimeters. Hit OK. So now you have seen three methods to model threads in Fusion 360. Choose the one you like best and works well for you. Depending on the printer and the materials you use, there might be some trial and error to figure out the perfect tolerance. But if you master it, there are some really cool things you can do. From my experience, bigger threads with higher pitch are easier to handle than small ones. But it's usually no problem to even get small ones to work if you don't have the cheapest printer there is. Whenever I'm working with 3D printed threads, I print out a small section of the part at first to see how the tolerances are. If they are too tight, I remove some material. If they are too loose, you can add some material. This can save you quite a lot of printing time. It's even possible to rethread your part with a normal tap to get it working properly. As with most 3D prints, PLA is the easiest material to print your threads because it can handle overhangs very well and due to its brittle nature it's easier to rework. If you want to have a nice and tight threaded connection, it might be necessary to use some force in the first couple of passes until the sliding surfaces adjust to each other. Depending on the size of your threads you have modeled, you will need to adjust the layer height. Small threads might require layer heights of 0.1mm or even less. This might need some trial and error, but usually thinner layers lead to a better result. In order to optimize the printing time, make use of the layer editing tools in Slicer or the processes in Simplify 3D. They enable you to reduce the layer height only in the region where your threads are and use thicker layers in the rest of your part. What's your experience with 3D printed threads? Do you have different methods to model them? Then leave a comment down below. Hit that like button if you learned something. If you wanna see more of these videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks to all the PayPal donations and your general support, which helped me keep the channel running. Have a good one, auf Wiedersehen and I'll see you next time.